right, welcome to our workshop on building confidence. I'm Cynthia McCoy. I'm a marketing coordinator here for the Workforce Solutions Division at uh, CBCC. And like I said, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about building confidence. Um, a lot of us, I'm sure, from time to time go through series of situations where our confidence is challenged. Um, I know I have and still do from time to time. So what I'm going to do is just share with you a few things that have helped me to overcome some of my low confidence or lack of confidence moments. And if you look at the title slide, you'll see a familiar picture of a cat uh, looking in the mirror. And what does he see? He sees a roaring lion. And during my research, one of the things that I did find that one of the steps to just building self-esteem and more confidence is wrapped around in how you see yourself. And he doesn't see himself as a shy uh, feline, but he sees himself as something bigger and something better and someone that can do a whole lot more. And that's really one of the first steps to building confidence is how you see yourself. One of the things I like to do also is look up the word um, that I'm talking about. And when you look at confidence, Webster's describes it as a feeling or belief that you can do something well or succeed at something. Um, it's also a feeling or belief that someone or something is good or has the ability to succeed at something. And then finally, Webster says that confidence is the feeling of being certain that something will happen or that something is true. And one of the main points that I got out of this is feeling or belief that you can, you know, not that you can't, but that you can. And I was talking to actually someone just a few minutes ago, and one of the things they said about the word can't, if you remove the letter T, you have the word can. So confidence starts with believing that you can. And while confidence is certainly a great thing to have, and these are great feelings to have, how do we get to that point? And that's one of the things, or a few of the things that I'm gonna share with you today is what are some steps that we can take to get to the point of being confident? Confidence is not something that you were born with or born without. Um, it's a learned skill. You can learn to build confidence, and you can learn to be more confident in your endeavors and in the things that you want to do in life. Um, go to the next slide here. I'm going to start off by talking about the seven steps to a more confident you. Okay, step number one. Um, which is what I just went over, is believing in yourself. Belief in yourself begins with a self-worth. Um, think about yourself, your strengths. Um, everyone has unique talents, gifts, and abilities. Um, look at your achievement log and reflect on that. And basically what that means is look at some of the successes that you've had um, with some of the things that you've done in life. Uh, one of the things that leads to low confidence or lack of confidence and low self-esteem many times is that we reflect on past failures or things that we've done or tried to accomplish that really didn't work out. One of the first steps or things that you can do to help in building your confidence is, you know, look at the positive things, have a positive outlook on life and some of the things that you have done or have succeeded in that really turned out well. Um, when you meet or talk to people, the, one of the first things that um, they could probably pick up on is whether you have low self-esteem or low uh, self-confidence. One of the things that for me is um, that I'm very confident about are the gifts and abilities that I have as a graphic designer. Um, I'm always getting compliments about my work. And one of the things I do is I accept those compliments um, graciously and with humility. If people are normally complimenting you about something or even, you know, patting you on the back, there's nothing wrong with that. Just accept it. Uh, the things that you are really good at and the things that 
give you the greatest satisfaction are normally the things that will give you a greater confidence when you seek to do them. Um, the more you do something that you're really good at and the more that you excel at it, the more confident that you become doing those things. And just to read the second paragraph, know what you're good at and what you still need to learn. With an accurate assessment of your abilities, you can tell the difference between self-doubt and lack of skill. One of the things also that can lead to a lack of confidence is trying to embark on things that you're not good at. And that's why when you look at your achievement log, um, you should be able to kind of evaluate some of the things that you've done. You know, you, you know yourself the things that you're good at and the things that you're not good at. So more than likely, the things that you know, you're know you not good at, you know, when you look at your achievement log or do a self-assessment, you know, you'll be able to tell, hmm, I'm not you know, good at, at those things. And it's not that you don't have the confidence to do it. It's just that you don't have the abilities or the you know, natural talent to excel at those things. So there's nothing wrong with that. So when it comes to you know, building confidence, just kind of look within yourself Try to identify the things that you're really good at, and then you know do some things that will help you excel at those things. Next step is personal appearance. If you're not confident in your personal appearance, then you might want to spruce up your wardrobe or your grooming techniques. So, again, when you meet and talk to people, the first impression that they have of you is what they see. So, if you're not properly groomed. Um, you know, it's just not a good impression. Um, what follows could lead to low self-esteem followed by a lack of confidence. If you look good, I always say if you look good, you feel good. And the chances are if you feel good, then that goes a long way to helping you build the confidence that you need for any given situation. Um, and this is really true, you know, if you're going on an interview or, you know, if you have to meet someone for the first time for whatever reason, um, just put your best foot forward. Um, Fix yourself up, look nice again. If you look good, chances are you're going to feel good, and that's going to help you to be confident in that situation um, when you're talking to them, you know, for whatever reason that might be. Identify your talents. Um, I kind of touched on that just a few minutes ago. Um, everyone is good at something, so discover the things at which you excel in and then focus on your talents. Um, express yourself whether it's through arts, music, writing, dance, or sports, and then add a variety of interests to your life. Um, it'll not only make you more confident, but it'll increase your chances of meeting like-minded friends. Um, iron sharpens iron, so you know if you surround yourself with like-minded individuals or people that you know have a little more knowledge in an area that you you know want to pursue or something that you're trying to do that really helps you and believe me, it will you know, rub off on you. And on the same token, um, people that aren't going anywhere or you know, that don't share the things that you, know, you share and you don't have a like-mindedness, then that will rub off on you in a bad way. And number four, increase your knowledge and learning. Take courses on things or subjects that interest you, Find new and interesting hobbies, read more books, surround yourself with other successful individuals, which pretty much we just hit on. Take trips and visit places where you've never been. Um, one of the things, I don't like to talk to people, you know, and find out that they've never been anywhere, or, you know, never want to explore or any new ventures. You know, if you want to go on a trip or if you want to do something, you know, of course it may be costly, but try to save up some money, but just try to, you know, do some things and do some different things. Um, increasing in knowledge and learning is, I believe, one of the best strategies for building self-confidence. Um, like I said, you can do that, you know, as far as taking extra courses, um, even, you know, picking up a new hobby. If there's something that you felt like that you've always wanted to do for, you know, a long, long time, it might be, you know, a good time for you to even try to pursue that. Um, if you you know, pick up, let's say, a new hobby or even, you know, take a course on something that, you know, you've been trying to learn. Once you get to the end of that or once you actually succeed in doing that, then that'll give you the confidence 
you know, that you need, you know, you've accomplished something, you've done something. So that's another thing that you can do. And then, you know, at the end of that, you might want to, you know, start something new. You know, let's say you always wanted to perhaps play the guitar. You take a course, you know, if you succeed in it, then great, you know, you might do part two or you might want to, you know, try something else. But again, that's another um, indicator so that, let's say it is, you know, a musical instrument. Well, you may not be gifted <laughs> to play a musical instrument. So that will be an opportunity also for you to find out if it is something that you can do. Again, if not, don't look at it as, you know, you failed, you don't have the confidence or you can't do it. Just look at it as you might need to find something else. So again, when you do your self-assessment and look at your, you know, achievement log, you'll be able to know the things that you're good at and be able to figure those things out. Okay, set a small goal and achieve it. People often make the mistake of shooting for the moon and then when they fail, they get discouraged. Um, instead of trying to shoot for the moon, I'd like to tell people to shoot for something a little more achievable. Um, set a goal you know that you can achieve and then achieve it. You'll feel good about that and then you can set, like we were saying, you know, even with the guitar, then you can set another small goal and achieve that. The more you achieve small goals, the better you'll be at it and the better you feel. Soon you'll be setting bigger yet still achievable goals and achieving those also. By taking baby steps, you'll be on your way to boosting confidence. And again, you may encounter failures and mistakes in life, but it's all about how you handle them. Don't let them be confidence busters. Confident people don't have time for pity parties. You know, basically what I like to tell people is, you know, if you fail or when you do fail, because, you know, we will fail. We're only human. Everything that we do isn't going to come out perfect or come out just right. Um, two or three minutes of, oh, man, I messed up. I didn't do that right. And then get up, bounce back. Um, people that have um, pretty good confidence levels and, you know, or really feel good about themselves, bounce back very quickly. Again, we're to learn from our mistakes and from our failures. We don't dwell on them. You know, five or 10 years from now, we may even look at them. And I like to tell my kids, teachable moments. You know, look at those times when you may be able to share or talk with, you know, someone else that may be traveling the road that you have traveled and that you've learned from. So again, and that's another step to helping you build your confidence. You know, once you've gone through something and once you have a story to tell, once you start sharing that with someone else, and that's confidence in and of itself because you're confident because you've gone through it, you're confident because you know how to handle it, and you're confident because you know the outcome. So you could be helping or saving someone else from making some of the same mistakes that you've made. And the number thing I like to tell people too to help boost confidence is volunteer. Uh, find time to volunteer for a good cause or even help a friend or neighbor that needs assistance. There is a lot of confidence boosting and building that comes from volunteering. Uh, I've had some of my greatest uh, confidence building moments from helping people, um, a friend or a neighbor that you know might need some help. Um, you know I've helped uh, people that may have you know needed someone to help watch the kids, or they may have been sick, fixed a meal, um, even people that, you know, might need help moving, or, you know, just any little thing. Um, the holidays are coming up, so there will be countless amount of opportunities to volunteer, whether it's through the Salvation Army, um, shelters, I mean, just all types of things. And again, once you do something like that, at least one time in the you know, even the feedback that you get from doing that, the thank you, and the, you know, I've even had people tell me, you know, you don't know what that meant to me. And again, you're not doing it for the pat on the back, but what you're doing it for is to help you because it helps you to be, you know, just even more confident that you can do something and that you can, you know, have something worthwhile to contribute to someone or to a cause. So that's, a, you know, a very good thing if you're going through some you know, low confidence moments and 
you know, nothing else is making sense. You don't want to start doing something. You, you know, you may not have a lot of friends. And like I said, if you go and volunteer, even at a shelter or do something, you know, even behind the scenes where you're not e even in front of people, that can really help, and that goes a long, long way. And one of the things I do know, there are a lot of uh, organizations that, that do need volunteers on a continual basis. All right, and number seven, which is one of my biggies, don't mistake confidence for arrogance. Um, there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. Uh, confidence is inspiring. Arrogance is a turn off. Confidence gets hired. Arrogance is shown the door. And building confidence takes work and arrogance is simple. Um, you can be the most confident person in the world concerning yourself and your abilities, but one of the things I like to warn people about is not to become arrogant. Uh, there are many, many, many stories about people of influence and other people um, who have let arrogance lead to their downfall. Uh, you can be confident without becoming arrogant. And just because you know you are confident about something, and just like I said earlier, you know, I'm, very confident in my abilities as a designer and marketing professional. But one of the things I do know and one of the things I'm leery of is the second that I become arrogant and prideful, it will certainly lead to mistakes and, you know, and like I just said, and, and even your downfall. So just be careful of that when you're on your quest to building confidence and becoming more confident that you just don't get, you know, cocky for lack of a better uh, word. And again, um, you know, people don't like it. It doesn't work in the workplace. It doesn't work in a classroom setting. And, you know, it just doesn't work in life. So you'll find yourself with fewer and fewer friends um, in the long run. So again, building confidence, you can do it. You can be very confident in what you do, like I said, in your abilities. But um, just don't let it overtake you. And one of the things that, um, I did want to say is if you don't have confidence in yourself, then nine times out of ten, uh, no one else will have confidence in you either. Um, like I said earlier, people will be able to pick up very quickly um, on the fact that you know you may or may not have confidence. And again, this goes a long way when you were, you know, on a job interview. You know, for instance, um, I've been on many interviews where I you know, felt that I've aced it because I went in there with confidence. And then there are other times I've gone on interviews and for whatever reason, kind of let those little voices, you know, get to me before I go in there and, you know, then the low confidence slips in. Uh, confidence building um, is a work, and that's why they, you know, they call it, you know, building. Um, you can have confidence, but again, there are things that you have to do to just stay on that track so that you don't lose it. And then lastly, um, there's a confidence self-test. And it's in your notes, and you know you don't have to take it now, but these are just some things that you can do that you can kind of look at you know, to see if you're on the right track for building confidence. Um, and it just contrasts self-confidence and low self-confidence. Of course, self-confidence is doing what you believe to be right even when others mock or criticize you for it. Um, it takes a very confident person to stand up um, for what's right and not you know, succumbing to the pressures or you know, of peers and, and others. Um, low self-confidence governing your behavior based on what other people think, that just, it doesn't work. Um, self-confident being willing to take risks and go the extra mile to achieve better things. And that's kind of what I was talking about with the increasing and the learning and the knowledge. Um, low confidence, staying in your comfort zone, fear, fearing failure and avoiding taking risks. That doesn't get you far. Uh, Self-confidence, admitting mistakes, learning from them. We kind of talked about that. Um, low self-confidence, working hard to cover up mistakes and hoping you can fix the problem before anyone notices. And self-confidence, accepting compliments graciously and with humility. And, you know, if somebody says thanks, well, you would say thanks. I really worked hard on that perspective. I'm pleased you recognize my efforts. And then the low self-confidence would be dismissing it. Oh, that was really nothing. Anyone could have done it. 
No, if someone compliments you on something that you know you're good at and you know that you did a good job on it, accept the compliment. Again, you know, with humility, you know, not prideful, not arrogantly, you know, it goes a long way. And finally, I just want to end with a quote um, from one of my favorite people, Walt Disney. Um, Somehow I can't believe that there are any heights that can't be scaled by a man who knows the secrets of making dreams come true. This special secret, it seems to me, can be summarized in four C's. There are curiosity, confidence, courage, and constancy. And the greatest of all is confidence. When you believe in a thing, believe in it all the way, implicitly and unquestionably. And this is a man whose legacy speaks for himself. Um, he may not, of course, he wasn't born with confidence. But again, as you know, the greater he got and the more things kept working for him, of course, the more confidence he had. And I'm sure he, you know, had moments where he may have had, you know, jitters. And I know he had some failures and some things that didn't work out. But again, with confidence, you can go a long, long way. Okay. Any questions? Thank <laughs> you.